Good morning, Church the Crossing. We are so glad you are here today. And if you are new around here, we want to say welcome. And also, if you're joining us online, it is a great day to be in church. Well, a couple things we want you to know this morning. One, make sure you have our app downloaded to your phone. There is a lot of things happening over the next few weeks around here, and we want to make sure you're up to date with everything. Also, we have a great opportunity today. Our uh, ministry partners over in Bangladesh are in a crisis situation. They have a huge food shortage, and they need some gardens planted with fresh vegetables. And so today, on your way out, you can go to the Connect Desk, and you'll be able to buy one of these packs. And what that does is it supplies a garden for a family over in Bangladesh. And what's even, I think, even better is it also has a name on the bottom of this. And so you're going to be able to not only supply a garden of fresh vegetables for them and fruit, but you're also going to be able to pray for them. So it's a great way for you to go love one more today. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord today as we stand and get ready to worship together. It's a blessing to be together. And for all of our family gathering online with us, welcome. We're glad that you're tuning in to be with us today. Where two or three are gathered in my name, he promises to be right in the middle of it. And it is so good to be in the house of the Lord today. Would you sing with us? I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let's worship. Take a deep breath. This worship belongs to the Lord this morning. the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory.
Our prayer is that God will still continue to do what he's always done, make a way when there seems to be no way. Let's sing. There is no fear, cause I believe. Sing church. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. I have a so thankful today that you have always provided in our lives even in times we don't recognize it father we say thank you we say thank you you are worthy father of all our praise today
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Lift your voice and sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. He's worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Sing the sweet name of Jesus. Jesus, the name above. the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you He's holy Holy There is no one like you There is none beside Sometimes it feels like everything is crashing in. Walls are falling apart and all those things we used to count on aren't there anymore. But I'm sure of this one thing today that God is my rock. He is my foundation and I will build my life on that rock. Would you all across this room, let's sing this. I will build my life upon your love. Sing. I will build my life upon
Welcome to Church of the Crossing. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the pastors here. If you are new or if this is your first time, I'm so glad that you chose to be with us. I hope that you feel welcome today. I just want to celebrate that our church is seeing some amazing things happening. We continue to welcome new guests and new people to our church every week. I, I just met somebody on our Thursday night service who came with their neighbor for the first time, brought them to church. Um, we also, you saw uh, all the children today that were dedicated. We have uh, baptisms next week. Many people are being baptized. So there is such good things happening in our church. Can we celebrate that for just a moment? Well, like I said, my name is Andrew. I'm glad that you're here. If you're watching online right now, glad that you are watching as well. We are in a message series called Bless This Home. And in this series, we're looking at a few statements that Jesus made in the Bible in Matthew chapter 5. And we're learning how you and I can become people who honor God and love Jesus with our lives, with our relationships, and our homes. And no matter if your home is made up of one person, or it's a home of two people, or a home of ten people... God wants to bless your home. And I believe today, no matter what situation you find yourself in, in your home, today God has a blessing for you. Now as we get started today, can I tell you a little secret about myself? Would that be all right if I let you in on a personal secret? Well, here it is. My secret is, I'm a little bit picky. I'm a little bit of a picky person, especially about keeping things clean and organized. I mean, I don't like germs. Before we came out here, we uh, sanitized, cleaned down this table, and I've got hand sanitizer. I'm really picky about uh, keeping dirt out of my house and inside my house. I'm picky about keeping thing every clean, everything clean and organized. Well, these idiosyncrasies of mine uh, embarrassed me recently when Lauren and I invited some friends over to our house. We were all outside enjoying the evening on the patio, and then one of our friends asked if they could use the restroom inside, which is a normal request when you're the guest at someone's house. And so I replied, sure, just take your shoes off before you go inside. Now, those who are applauding, you're a little bit picky too. Now, looking back, I understand how my friend might have been a little bit puzzled, maybe a little bit offended. But in the moment, I felt like I needed to explain myself. And so I said, listen, I have indoor shoes. I have outdoor shoes. I don't mix them up. I would never wear outdoor shoes inside and never wear inside shoes outside. Like, let's keep this straight. I'm a little bit picky. Sometimes I'll even clean my house uh, to relax. Just last weekend, Lauren was out of town visiting some family, and I was getting ready for a quiet evening home alone by myself. And On the phone, Lauren and I were talking, and she asked me what I was doing that evening to relax, and I said, I'm so excited, I'm doing a deep clean in my home office. (laughs) Pray for Lauren. Please pray for Lauren. She needs a lot of grace to live with me. Now, I promise that the rest of this message today is not about house cleaning advice. I promise. I want to say that you do not need to have a clean home to have a blessed home. You do not need a perfect home to have a blessed home. No matter if your home is one person or two people or 10 people, whether it is spotless or whether there's a little bit of mess, God wants to bless your home. And a blessed life begins with the heart. A blessed home starts with the heart. And this brings us to something that Jesus said in Matthew chapter five. So I wanna invite you to read with me what Jesus said in Matthew five, verse eight. It's here on the screen as well. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Now, when Matthew was writing the words of Jesus down, he was writing in an ancient Greek language, and the word for pure can also be translated into an English word, clean. So Jesus is saying, blessed are the clean in heart, for they will see God. God wants you and me to have clean hearts and pure hearts. He wants us to have clean motives and uh, pure attitudes in our hearts because those with pure hearts are going to see God and know God and have a relationship with God. Your heart is the most powerful and influential part of who you are. Think of it this way. Have you ever been infatuated with somebody? Maybe somebody you had a crush on? Well, your heart's in love. Or on the other extreme, 
Have you ever laid awake at night just worrying and stressing? It's likely your heart is filled with anxiety. Or there's the feelings of sadness that come with grief or a personal loss. Your heart is hurting in those situations. Your heart is the most personal, intimate part of what makes you, you. And God wants us to have pure hearts. Today, I wonder, do you have a a hurting heart that needs healing today? Do you have a heavy heart today? Do you have a restless heart that is looking for peace? Do you want a heart that knows God and can see God clearly? This is why Jesus spends so much of his time talking about the heart. He concentrates so much attention talking about the issues of the heart, not just behavior. Because if we keep reading in, um, in, in chapter 5 of Matthew, we see that Jesus talks about heart issues. He says this in verse 27. Take a look at verse 27. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is a matter of the heart, not just behavior. And then going a little bit further in verse 43, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. These are issues of the heart. Jesus is talking about our heart's desires. He's talking about our heart's motives and attitudes. Because the big idea of this message series is something that Pastor James mentioned last week, and I want to remind us today. The big idea of this series is that we are not just a Christian family, we are a Christ-centered family. We're a Christ-centered home. A Christ-centered home means that Jesus is at the center of our relationships. Jesus is at the center of our decisions and our values. A Christ-centered home means that Jesus is at the center of my heart. So if I want a Christ-centered family, if I want a Christ-centered life, then Jesus has to be at the center of my life. It starts with the heart. And when Jesus was teaching in this context, there were people who had clean lives on the outside, good religious behavior on the outside, but their inner life, their heart was impure. Imagine if you've invited guests over to your house. You've got company coming. Do you ever hurry around and, and rush to clean up and tidy up? I know I do. I, I hurry around and I'm uh, hiding all the laundry in the laundry room and then I'm shoving all the junk into the junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer, right? And, and then uh, putting things in the closets and the cabinets because I want it to look clean. I want it to appear clean when the guests arrive, but it's not really clean, is it? It just looks clean. I just hid the mess. We can live our lives that way where it looks good on the outside. We can go to church. We can give money. We can volunteer. We can talk about Jesus. We can talk about faith on the outside. But what about the inside? Are we just stuffing the junk in the junk drawer of our heart? Are we just burying the baggage so nobody else can see it? Jesus wants us to have clean hearts, pure hearts. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. If we want pure hearts that know God, if we want to see God clearly, the very first thing we need to know uh, about pure hearts is that without Jesus, my heart is polluted. Without Jesus, my heart is polluted. Every human being is polluted with sin. We've got sinful desires, sinful thoughts, sinful cravings. We all are polluted by sin. And don't get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up because we all have this sin issue. You're in the majority. You could turn to your neighbor and say, your heart's polluted with sin. We all have a sin pollution problem. Look at what Jesus once said in Matthew 15 describing the pollution of the heart. He said, out of the heart come evil thoughts. Murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. This is what pollutes our hearts. Pollution in our hearts keep us from seeing God clearly. Many of you know that I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Pittsburgh has a long, rich history of industry and manufacturing. In the 19th and 20th centuries, uh, Pittsburgh was the leading producer of steel uh, in the world, one of the leading producers in the entire world. And there were hundreds of steel mills and factories across the Pittsburgh region. And this great production also came at great cost. 
because the pollution created by these steel, steel mills covered the sky and polluted the air. And the air quality was really poor. And it was so bad, but by the time the 1940s came around, Pittsburgh was in a cloud of darkness at all hours of the day. In fact, we have one picture. If, if you go to this picture, you see the street lights are on. This picture was taken in the middle of the day. You couldn't see the sun. You couldn't see the tops of buildings because the smog and the pollution was so heavy in Pittsburgh. In 1941, a well-known musician, Woody Guthrie, visited Pittsburgh, and he wrote a song about Pittsburgh. He said that the city was a smoky old town that made him cough and choke from the iron fillings and sulfur smoke. If you spoke to somebody living in Pittsburgh many, many decades ago, they would probably tell you the pollution was normal. It's a normal part of industry, a normal part of the economy and the manufacturing. They wouldn't be bothered by it. They would say this pollution is normal. Similarly, the pollution of sin in our hearts keeps us from seeing God clearly, and that pollution of sin tells us that sin is normal. Have you ever heard the expression, uh, follow your heart? You know, it's the idea that says, uh, follow what makes you happy. Do what you think is best for you. Follow your heart. Uh, that's a well-intended sentiment. But the Word of God actually warns us about following a polluted heart. Look at what Jeremiah chapter 17 says. It says this in verse 9. The heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. A polluted heart can deceive us into believing that sin is normal. A polluted heart tells us, do what makes you feel good. If it feels good, it must be right. Make up your own rules. Decide what's good for you. But a polluted heart will not lead us closer to God. Following a polluted heart does not take us to God. It takes us the other way. It takes us down a road of d disappointment, despair, and devastation. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So I wish today that I could tell you here's 10 steps to achieving a pure heart. I wish I could tell you today if you do this one thing every day for the next year, at the end of the year, you're going to be rewarded with a pure, clean heart. But it doesn't work that way because you and I can't clean our own hearts. We can't make our own hearts pure on our own. It's, it's like scrubbing a stain out of a shirt or out of the carpet. It just you scrub and scrub and work and work, but it just doesn't come out. It's, it's always going to be there. Only God can cleanse our hearts. Only God can get rid of the pollution. Only God can get rid of the sin that's in our hearts. And that's why I want to say that God's mercy purifies my heart. God's mercy purifies my heart. It's his mercy that washes our hearts clean. We can't do it on our own and in our own power. Today we've been looking at Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. But in the verse right before that in verse 7, Jesus talks about mercy. He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mercy is grace in action. We don't deserve it. We cannot earn it. We just receive the mercy of God. Because the mercy of God is demonstrated in the person and the work of Jesus. When Jesus came to earth and lived on earth as a human, Jesus did not have pollution in his heart. His heart was perfect. His heart was clean. He had no sin. And then he gave his life as a sacrifice to pay for our sin. When he died on the cross, he died as our substitute, suffering our punishment and our brokenness. But he didn't just die. Three days later, he rose from the dead, conquering death, defeating all the pollution, all the sin, all the junk that separates you from God. If he's powerful enough to rise from the dead, he's powerful enough to change your life. God reminds us in Romans chapter 5, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were still weak, while we were still in darkness, while we were still lost, while we could not save ourselves, while we were addicted, while we were bound, while we were prisoners of sin, 
while we were still weak, Christ died for the ungodly so that you can see God. When you look at this Jesus, the Jesus who is crucified, the bleeding, dying Jesus on that cross, you see who God is clearly. He came to show us the love of God. And he triumphed over all of that when he rose from the dead. Jesus is our hope for new lives. His mercy is greater than the darkness of a hard heart. His mercy is greater than the addiction and the guilt that comes to a hard heart. His mercy is greater and stronger than a hurting and broken heart. He is our hope for healed hearts. He is our hope for forgiveness in our hearts. He is our hope for eternal life because his love has washed our hearts. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, he'll change your heart so that you can see God clearly, so that you can know him clearly. I shared earlier about the pollution and the air quality in Pittsburgh. Well, today, Pittsburgh is a lot more clean and a lot more clear. The city leaders got serious about cleaning up the pollution, and today it is one of the most beautiful cities. This picture right here is taken from an incline overlook called Mount Washington. And you can see from Mount Washington the entire city. You can see the three rivers coming together. Uh, in the morning, the sunrise is beautiful. The sun sets can be breathtaking sometimes. And this, this is an actual location where I took Lauren on our first date. It's also where I proposed to her. Well, I didn't propose to her on the first date, but <laughs> a couple years later. Jesus clears away the pollution so he can see God clearly, so you can see his path for you, so you can see the, the faith steps he wants you to take. Recently, I experienced God clearing some pollution so that I could see him more clearly. Last week, I was traveling in Roatan, Honduras, and we were doing some mission work there in the poorest of the poor communities. And on one day, we were in a community going door to door. We were serving uh, food and offering prayer and telling people about Jesus door to door. And it was extremely hot. I mean, the sun was out. We were sweating. It was exhausting work. And we did this for a few hours that day. And at the end of our uh, serving day, our leader said, before we go back to the hotel, we need to make one more stop. I didn't want to make one more stop. I was hot, I was sweaty, I was tired, I had a headache, I was hungry. I want to go back to my hotel, to the air conditioning, take a shower. But we made this stop, and we parked the car, and then we walked down this steep, rocky ravine. And as I was walking down this really steep ravine, there, there was a house at the bottom where we were going. And as I'm walking down this ravine, I'm telling myself, I don't want to do this, I want to go back. I've served God enough today, can I just have some air conditioning? And we walked into this little tiny house, and we met a man who lived there with his young daughter. And this man had recently lost both of his legs uh, to amputation because of an infection, which also means he couldn't work, so he lost his job. And he was struggling to make ends meet, and he could barely cover the funds for his medication. In addition to that, recently a thief broke in and stole a lot of his equipment and tools out of his house. And as I was standing there in this man's house with no air conditioning, the sweat's just pouring down my back, I felt God speak to me. And God said, Andrew, when you look at this man, this man, you're looking at me. When you see this man, you see me. When I walked into that house, I had some pollution. My attitude was a little polluted. When I walked out of that house, I was changed because I had seen God clearly in that encounter with that man. When you follow Jesus, when he cleanses your heart, you see him clearly. You see him in your life. You see him providing when you can't make ends meet. You see him bringing healing in the pain. You see him, even in the relationships with people that are maybe annoying or frustrating you, you see how God sees that person with compassion. When you're just clouded by confusion and chaos, you're going to see God clearly through the confusion. When the storm cloud of grief and sorrow is over you, you're going to see past that storm cloud, and you're going to see God clearly. He loves you. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, I said earlier that we can't clean our own hearts. We, we can't make our hearts pure. God has to do that. We have to surrender and yield to him. But I do believe there are some signs of a pure heart, that we can look for evidence in our own lives of a pure heart. 
And the first piece of evidence, I would say, is pure thoughts. Pure thoughts are a marker of a pure heart. Because what we think about, what, what we dwell on in our mind, makes its way into our hearts, and it affects our hearts. And so I want to encourage you with a scripture from Philippians chapter 4. It says this, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think. Think about these things. Think about what's honorable. Think about what's pure. Think about what's lovely and excellent. Think about these things. And there's two questions that we can ask ourselves when we think about pure thoughts. Those questions are, what do I take in and what do I treasure? What do I take in and what do I treasure? What we take into our mind influences our hearts. What we watch, what we see, what we listen to, who we talk to, those things make their way into our hearts, into our values. Have you ever done a juice cleanse? You know what a juice cleanse is? Juice cleanse is where you take three or four days and you only consume uh, juice made from vegetables and fruit. Some of you are like, nope, don't sign me up for that. I've done a few juice cleanses, and when I do these juice cleanses, I have to go buy a lot of vegetables. You need pounds and pounds of vegetables and fruit. And when you think you bought enough, buy a little bit more because it doesn't go very far. And so then you have to press all these vegetables and fruits into juice. And you got to get the right balance of bitter and sweet. You know, if I just press kale and spinach and ginger, that's going to be a pretty bitter tasting juice. So i got to balance it with some apples and uh, oranges to get the right mixture. Every time I do a juice cleanse, I feel better. I sleep better. I think more clearly. I feel healthier because I'm putting in these healthy organic ingredients into my body. The same is true of our mind and our heart. What we put in, what we take into our minds is going to affect our heart. It's going to affect our attitude. It's going to affect who we are. So what do you take in? Take in the Word of God. Memorize Scripture. Hide God's Word in your heart. Remember His promises, His character. Talk about the goodness of God with your family. Take those things in. That's one question is, what what do I take in? And the second is, what do I treasure? What do I treasure? What's most important to you? What do you value the most? What is the most important thing to you? What we treasure shows the values. It reveals the values of our heart. Let me share something that Jesus once said. This is in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus once said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What you treasure is a value of your heart. And let me tell you, the treasures of this world do not last. The treasures of this world will let you down and not keep you for eternity. Cars will rust. Buildings crumble. Resumes will be forgotten and bank accounts will dwindle. But the treasures of God are for eternity. The values of God, the things of God last forever. Those are the things we're called to treasure. So that's one piece of evidence of a pure heart is pure thoughts. A second piece of evidence of a pure heart is pure talk. Pure talk. The words that we say are a reflection of our heart. The the things that we say reveal our heart. If my words are critical and harsh, then I probably need some heart work. If my comments are mean or rude or selfish, then my heart needs some more work. Let me remind you of what Jesus once said about our words. This is Matthew chapter 15. Jesus says, what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. The words we say reflect what's in our heart. What comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. So today I want to encourage you to think before you speak. Think before you speak. And I want to share an acronym that I learned uh, many years ago that helps me think before I speak, helps me make my words count. And here's the acronym, it's think before you speak. T, is it true? Is what I'm saying going to be honest and truthful? H, helpful. Are these words going to help this situation right now? I is inspiring. Is this something that's going to inspire someone? It's going to encourage someone. It's going to motivate them. 
And then N is necessary. Are these comments really necessary? Are these needed right now in this way at this time? And then finally, kind. Do my words express care? Do my words show kindness? So pure talk, pure thoughts, these are evidence of a pure heart. But let me remind you, don't get this backwards. Don't get this backwards. Do not think that if I just have better speech, if I clean up my language, then I'm going to have a pure heart. If I think better thoughts, if I think more pure thoughts, then I'm going to have a pure heart. Remember, we don't clean our hearts. Don't get it backwards. God cleans our hearts. God shapes our hearts because of what Jesus did. This is just evidence. These are signs that we can grow in as we follow Jesus. And that's why I want to emphasize baptism for a moment. Baptism is an incredible expression of what God does in a heart. See, when you go under the water, it's a sign that the old you, the polluted you, is washed and it's dead and gone. And when you come out of the water, you're washed clean in the grace of Jesus. We've got several people who are signed up to be baptized next weekend, and there is still room. If you would like to be baptized, go to our website, go to the app where you can learn more and sign up today. I don't know today what the condition is of your heart. I don't know what you're carrying I don't know the struggles that you have. I don't know the guilt or the regret in your heart. I'm unaware of the temptations and struggles and maybe even sin that's in your heart. But today, do you want a heart that knows God? Do you want a heart that sees God clearly? Today, I can only imagine that in this environment, there are hurting hearts that need healing. There are broken hearts that need the pieces picked up. There may even be dark hearts and hard hearts that need God's light and his forgiveness. Today, in Jesus' name, the love of God is about to break into your heart. The healing of God is about to cover your heart and consume you in his love. I told you earlier that I was traveling last week in Roatan, Honduras. There was one day where we went with a local pastor to visit a local jail. And in that culture, if you go to jail... They don't feed you meals. You have to depend on charity or your family to bring you meals while you're in jail. And so we went to this jail to serve a meal, and there were three young men in jail that day. And they were so young. They had to be 20, 21, 22 years old. And we, we fed these guys a meal, and then we sang some songs, and we read some scripture to them. And then the pastor, the local pastor, shared the gospel message of Jesus with these young men. And I remember looking at these three young men behind bars. And I distinctly remember the one who stood in the middle. He was taller than the other two. And as the pastor was talking about Jesus, this young man had both of his hands on the bars. And he stuck his face between the opening between those bars, listening to the message of Jesus. And before the pastor could even finish, the young man cried out, I want a new heart. And that day, he and the other prisoners prayed to receive Jesus as their Savior. Their hearts were changed. When we left that day, those men were still in jail, but their hearts were changed. They were still in trouble. They still had to go to court, but their hearts were changed. Today, you're not in a physical jail cell, but does your heart need freedom? Does your heart need free from sin? Does your heart need free from an addiction does your heart need free from guilt and shame? Does your heart need freedom today from the grief and the sorrow that's been crippling you? Does your heart need healing today? Hope for tomorrow. Somebody here today needs to know, speaking directly to your heart, that there is a tomorrow, that there is a future, that there is life worth living because God loves you and he cares about you and he has called you. Do you need a heart that sees God today? Psalm 51 says, Oh God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. This is our prayer today. God wants to do some heart washing today. God wants to do some heart healing today. So I want to invite you to a moment of prayer right now. You're welcome to close your eyes if you'd like, but this is a moment for you to turn your heart to God. Oh heart be still. Oh, heart be calm. 
Today, if you are living far from God, if, if you feel like your heart is dark, your heart is hardened, your heart is not in a relationship with God, but you want a relationship with God, today I'm going to encourage you to repeat a simple prayer after me. And it goes like this. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died for me and rose from the dead to save me. Today I confess that Jesus is Lord of my life. If you prayed that simple prayer, you now have a relationship with the God who loves you. Your sin is wiped away. Your heart is being washed right now. The guilt, the shame, the regret is being washed away. The fear is being washed away. The anger is being washed away. I want to continue in this time of prayer in these next few moments just to listen to the heart of the Father. God, wash away the stains. Wash away the stains. Just have a mental picture of of stains, like stains you can't get out of a out of a piece of clothing, but it's like stains on your heart, stains on your conscience. God, wash away the stains today. Wash away the stains. Have a mental picture of of like a heart that's got a lot of like scars, a lot of a lot of band-aids, a lot of things that you've tried to do it yourself, like tried to patch this up, tried to clean this up, tried to fill that hole in the heart with this or that, and it's just not working, and it's, 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 it's broken. God wants to renew your heart, to change your heart, to cleanse your heart, to, to hold you in his hands, and it's only his grace. And I think maybe today you have to admit, I can't do it on my own anymore. I think that's for someone here today. I can't do this on my own. God, take control. I think that's your prayer today. God, take control. And when he takes control, he's going he's gonna to heal. He's going to redeem. He's going to reclaim. He's going to give you rest. He's going to give you peace. So, Father God, we pray for each individual, each person in this room, God, that they will know you, that they will trust you. God, I pray for all of the hearts here, that our hearts will see you clearly. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, the one who died, but the one who rose from the dead, the one who has a perfect heart, who has a perfect desire, who is perfect in every way. God, may we see him clearly today. May we see him as the good shepherd. May we see him as the healer. May we see him as the teacher. May we see him as the tender one. Yes, God, may we see him clearly your son, Jesus. God, open the hearts, open the eyes, open the hearts, open the eyes that we may see you and know you. Oh God, we love you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. As we close our time together today, we want to sing a song that has been part of church tradition for generations in moments just like this. Let's sing these words as a prayer today, no matter where you're coming from, no matter your circumstance today. God is ready and waiting for us. Just 
today. I just want to say a couple encouraging things. One is that uh, next week we are going to, uh, we have scheduled six more baptisms. That means that's 26 baptisms just this summer. Can we praise God for that? God is at work. God is doing a great work. And, and just last week, you guys know I was gone for uh, uh, about a month. And, and I, I came back last week and I, I met five different families over the course of the day uh, with, with young children. And as I met them, they would tell me that, hey, you know, we've been coming for the last several weeks and we're all in. And I thought, I should go away more often. 
that might be the key to us reaching more people is if I just am not around. And, but it was such a joyful thing knowing that even while I was away, you are staying on mission and, and, and you guys are doing a phenomenal job uh, of reaching people for Christ. And also uh, today, that was our 12th baby dedication just this year. We're, we're actually trying to figure out more room uh, for our, uh, uh, our nursery. But let me tell you, this has been a crazy year, but your faithfulness, faithfulness in in person services and online services and and in giving. It is your faithfulness that has kept us able to continue on throughout this season, even when it was crazy, when uh, this was a ghost town some weeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to praise God. And, and by the way, things are, school starting back. Things are going to get crazy. Things are going to get political. Things are going to, uh, people are going to have a lot of opinions. But here's what we're going to do at Church of the Crossing. Look at my eyes. We're going to stay focused on Jesus. And this place is going to be all about Jesus. If you have any other questions about anything else, the answer is going to be Jesus. And our eyes are going to be focused on Jesus. And that's what we're going to focus on here. And we're going to ask him to continue to bring people into his kingdom. So here's what we're going to do as we're entering into another crazy season, because you're, if you're on the news, you know it's getting crazy again. Uh, we're just going to ask God to continue to bless this place and ask God to help us keep our eyes on him. And we're also going to give him praise for how faithful he's been. Can you join me in that prayer today? Let's do this. Let's really pray, okay? God, we just come to you right now. We praise you for uh, the the new people who are coming to Christ. We praise you for the baptisms next week. We praise you for uh, the the wonderful, wonderful new families and these precious, precious children that you're bringing into uh, our church. And we just are so thankful for them. And God, uh, we give you praise for how you've kept this church afloat this year. Not only afloat, but but God, uh, thriving in many ways. Thank you for your faithfulness. And God, I give you praise for the faithfulness of these people. Those who are online every week, uh, being faithful and those who are in person, those who are serving, I give you praise. And God, as we come into this next season, and if we're, we're looking at the news and we're like, oh gosh, here it comes again. So Lord, here's what we're gonna ask you to do. Help us to keep our eyes on you. We want to honor you. We want to bring you glory. We want to exalt you. We wanna be Jesus people. We wanna be people who are focused on uh, growing in your word, people who are uh, worshiping you with all of our hearts uh, instead of being distracted by every single argument that's being thrown around. God, help us to keep our eyes upon you, Jesus. We wanna be a people group that you say, well done well done. And so Lord, we pray this right now and God help us to reach more people for Jesus because we have never seen so much pain. We've never seen so much darkness. We've never seen so much hurt. And Lord, I have never seen so much lostness in my adult life. And so Jesus, help us to be your vehicle for the gospel. And we all pray this now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey church, just a few things before we leave. If you need prayer today, we would love to pray for you over anything. You need somebody just to talk to you for a minute. There'll be prayer partners up front. Come see them. Also, there is next steps coming up. If you're new around here, we would love to connect with you. So text the number on the screen. You get a free gift. It's going to be a great time for you to connect. And also, Pastor Jane mentioned baptisms. There is still room. If you would like to be baptized, if you have a kid or a youth in your family that wants to be baptized, go on our website at golove.org, sign up, and you'll get all the information you need to know. All right, let's go do this. Go love one more this week. We'll see you.